Well, it's a small victory, but it is something. We fixed the burnt out or missing daytime bulb. <laughs> it just turned off as soon as I said I fixed it. You've got to be kidding me. This thing absolutely hates me. So today we are back working on the Escalade once again. Who would have thought, huh? Now I hate to jinx myself, but it should be a pretty simple install because all we're gonna be doing today is taking care of the lighting. So we got some new bulbs here from Last Fit Lighting. They sent me bulbs from my Tahoe quite a few years back. It may have been all the way back in 2019, 2020 or so. So I reached out to them to see if they wanted to send me a set for the Escalade and they did. We actually have a set for the low beams and the high beams and their LEDs. So we're gonna be taking out the xenon lights that are already in there and whatever else might be in there. Cause it looks like somebody put LED um, high beams in at one point, except one bulb is missing. So I wanna get the low beam swapped out and the high beams with these guys. We'll get rid of those uh, xenon low beams that could kind of be problematic. And then we'll go ahead and I have some uh, 194 LEDs. I wanna try to swap these out for the daytime running bulbs and maybe the license plate bulbs. Cause it's also for some reason missing a daytime running bulb. So on the driver's side here, we have an LED daytime bulb, LED high beam. So I am Matt from the future. Do not listen to past Matt because he confused a lot of things and uh, pretty much that's the high beam and the low beam. That's the daytime running light. That's the marker light. That's all you need to know. And then the low beam's working. These may have been swapped out already. I don't know if these original Xenons, um, they're white. I would think the original lights are more like a halogen color. So it might have LEDs in them already. However, I do hear the classic like Xenon buzzing noise. So the ballasts are definitely still powered and possibly uh, being used. But you can see on the passenger side here, we got no daytime bulb, no high beam bulb, and then the low beam's working as it should. Now, as for fog lights, it does have LED fog light bulbs already. And when I had the wheel wells off when I was doing the, uh, the front shocks, I did see the LED bulbs and they're already white. So we're gonna leave them alone. We might just go ahead and clean up the, uh, the housings. But as for the headlights, this one might actually be new because this housing is like really, really clean. This one's not terrible. It's not really yellowed, but it has a bunch of like bug guts just kind of embedded in it. So we might try polishing this one up at least. But let's go ahead, pop the hood, and see how we can get these installed. Because a lot of different accounts of uh, how these actually go in. A lot of people say you gotta remove the whole bumper, you gotta remove the wheel well. I think I might be able to get them under the hood if I just pull the air box out and the washer tank, but that might be easier said than done. Now, at least for the driver's side, everything we need to get to is right behind this flap here. So I'm gonna zip that driver's side battery tray out. And then we might be able to pull that back far enough to get in there. If not, we'll just try to remove it all together. But now we have some room to kind of play with this. Let's try to get this, this flap out of here. Always freaking work. Should have bought those years ago. Is that enough to see what's inside here? The low beam's a little bit of a pain. It's right, it's like all the way down at the base of the neck here. But I think eh, that'll be fine. What's going on? Oh, the light, all the, these LEDs, man, they're taking a crap, huh? Yeah, that's plenty of room to work. So I'm not sure where the hell are even the ballasts on this thing. So I believe, now of course I haven't read the instructions yet, but I believe the, the ballast gets unplugged and then the LEDs get plugged into like the power wire for the ballast, I believe. Um, let's see here. Okay, well here is our high beam. That is simple enough. Why does this? I thought both, I thought the lights were the same. This looks totally different. Hold on. 
I could have swore. Now, I ordered these lights. Like, I know the the, the low beam, it's a, D, it's a D1, D1S, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a D1 bulb. And I did some very, very quick research, and it appeared that the high beams were the same exact part number. The same type of bulb, but now it's looking like they are not. So I do not have high beam bulbs for this. Which is on me. Let's just, I guess, you know what, let's do something easy. Oh, that's not going to be easy, is it? Oh, no, it came out. Okay, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get back in, but I'm not sure about these either. These might be too bright. I just wanted to have them, like, match the nice white color, because that's what was already in there. And I think it'll look good with the having everything match, but I really don't know now. Let's go throw the lights on. Ooh, that's bright. Well, that's not, okay, that's workable though. That's, I would say that's probably about the brightness as the old, same brightness as the old one. Let's see if we can actually get this guy back in here. Oh, that was easy. Just gotta use my other hand. All right, perfect, that looks pretty good. Awesome, got the nice white light. I thought they were going to be like way too stupid bright, but that looks pretty much the same as the bulb that was in there. So next up, can't do anything with that. All right, we got to try to get that off. I might actually have to pull the fender liner off. Now I know you guys aren't going to be able to see anything. <clears throat> There's this clip and this cover on here. So I'm going to try to pry that up or push that little button in. And that should allow this whole cover to come off, and then our bulb should be in there. Just need something to kind of push in on that, that tab. Yes. Awesome. Now, how does this bulb come out? Looks like it has a very strange locking mechanism on it. I mean, that thing looks like it just rotates right in there. I can't tell if there's like a, if there's a clip, like the, what are the H11 bulbs? They kind of have like a, a clip that goes around the outside of them. I'm not sure what's going on here. Ooh, I think I see the ballast though. It's mounted in the headlight. God, there's like no space to actually get your hand in there to turn it, get a good grip on it. Ugh. I will say these do look like, these are definitely the, uh, the Xenons. They didn't put LEDs in them. They didn't convert the low beams. But how the hell do you get these stupid things out of here? Usually in this situation, I just pry on things until they give up and then I pull it out and I get to see what broke and what was holding, you know, holding it in. <sighs> I'm gonna resort to Google for this one. I'm going in with the camera. What the hell is holding this thing in? It looks like it has screws going through it. Is it screwed in? No. This thing does not want to turn. And no matter where, oh, that's upside down. There it is. It's locked. So now I can put this back into the housing. So I just want to share that quick tip real quick. But how do they come out? God, dude, that doesn't want to turn though. Come on, man. Dude, did they glue this thing in? I guess I jinxed myself, huh? About it being a simple install. Unbelievable. I'm getting the pliers. I don't even know if they're gonna fit in there. I'm getting the pliers. I don't give a shit. Because this should just come out and turn. So everything I'm seeing, it does not want to do that though. No, oh, man, something's locking it in. What is locking it in? That's why it doesn't want to turn. There's gotta be a release on this. I mean, the fact that nobody's like zoning in on it, either I'm an absolute idiot and I'm missing something or something strange is afoot here. I feel there's like a clip, but I think that's just the clip that holds the bulb to the, the locking ring. Is that even a clip? It doesn't feel like a clip. Like, am I pulling the headlight out? Don't make me pull the headlight out. I'm not pulling the headlight out. Screw that. It dead stops. Like when you try to, it turns a tiny bit and then it just stops. Like it, there's a lock. There's gotta be a lock. All right. Turn left. All right, YouTube users. Turn, turn left. left. 
So it does, it is a bit of a pain in the ass and it gets stuck, but you just turn it out left. Thank you, Dustin Elgin. Nine years ago. All right. So I guess we just wiggle and wiggle and turn it, turn it. That's all we could do, it would seem. Dude, this is ridiculous. It's gonna make me pull the whole headlight out, isn't it? Like, I'm on it too. It's not like I can't access it. Do we gotta like push in maybe? Nothing can be easy. You try to do it the easier way and you end up just wasting more time and you have to do it the normal way anyway. Because I can get to the bolt. There's, it's not a problem. The bolt is right there. I can even get pliers on it to turn it. It does not want to release. And if I break that, that retainer that the bulb sits in, then I'm really going to be screwed. I'm also very lazy. I'm probably just going to continue to twist on this until it does eventually break. All right, I give up on that side for now. Let's go ahead and jump onto the, the passenger. Maybe, I don't know, something funky is going on with the driver's side. If I could get this one out, at least I could see, you know, what I'm looking at and what could possibly be the issue. But I'm just going to pull the airbox out. Boom, easy enough. Everything over here is like covered in transmission fluid still. Ugh. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll give that a wipe. But look at that, we have miles of room on this side. I think I know now why there's no, uh... <laughs> no, that can't be it, right? Well, you can see, like I said, we have no daytime bulb over here, and there's no cover either. But I think I have that in the back of the car. But I think the reason there's no bulb is because... Somehow, this connector... I don't know if somebody had the headlight out, or what the hell they did. But when they put it back together, they weren't paying attention to where this connector went. And it's like wedged behind the, uh, between the headlight and this brace for the front end. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not pulling these headlights out, man. <sighs> the simplest shit. It's always the simplest shit. I have less issues putting the freaking engine back together. Connector off the bulb. Easy enough. Now is this one going to turn? No. There's got to be a lock. Why does nobody put videos on the lock? There's gotta be a lock. What's locking it in? Let's try to get the, that's not, how the hell did they get that under behind there? They just, I guess they were defeated by this thing. They're like, nope, I will run without a daytime bulb. Okay, dude, I give up. Like, whatever, the, the headlights clearly wanna come out, so I guess we're removing the headlights. Or are we? I solved the mystery of getting this out, if I, I just shoved it all the way in and I got it to slide up here and I was able to get it out. So that's that problem solved. Let's go ahead and this is missing the whole bulb housing, isn't it? There's supposed to be a, a socket in here. The connector, this, it's missing. I may have something because I picked up, yes. Oh, these are different though. Uh, I picked up these. Sylvania's initially because I, I couldn't figure out what bulb the daytime light was and everything online points to this stupid thing with the socket attached but as you saw when we pulled that out it's just a simple 194 you don't need this whole thing so take a look at this light this is the daytime bulb for the passenger side that's the daytime housing right we got like a plastic clip in there and then I'm assuming the bulb, this is somehow supposed to maybe clip into that. But then if you look on the other side, oh wait, no, I'm an idiot. Aha! Uh, I never cease to impress myself. That's not the same socket, that's the high beam socket. Remember, this side doesn't have a high beam bulb in it already. So that was the high beam bulb connector I was wrestling with. The daytime bulb is right up there which I will remove now. Wait a minute, does that mean that I non unintentionally 
bought high beam bulbs then? Because this looks like it'll fit in there now somehow. Well, it's a small victory, but it is something. We fixed the burnt out or missing daytime bulb. <laughs> it just turned off as soon as I said I fixed it. You've got to be kidding me. This thing absolutely hates me. What the hell? It's back for now. Dude, is there something weird going on with this? Is that why there's no bulb in there? <sighs> That's a yes. Thanks for clarifying, Escalade. Am I going to own you for very much longer? Yes, light up the bulb. Am I going to sell you for a major loss? Is anything good going to come out of fixing you? Is anything bad gonna come out of fixing you? Am I losing my mind? No, you don't wanna to talk to me now? Oh, I'm losing my mind or you don't wanna to talk to me? All right, so I tried a different bulb. It seems to be working fine. I tried wiggling it, but it didn't come back on. So it might just be a problem with the bulb itself, but. For now, they're both on. Let's uh, go back to messing with the stupid low beams. I think there's one, I hope it's only one. It looks like there's one 10 mil. Is that going to the headlight? I don't know. There's like a 10 mil behind here. I'm just gonna try to get that out. Uh, see if that's going to the headlight. Hopefully it is. Loosen the grill might help. I hate everything about this. Anybody ever done a, oh, I'm, that's a stupid question. Of course you probably have. Uh, a headlight on a, uh, on a GMT 800? Hmm? You ever done one of those? They're so hard to replace, man. So much worse than this. Like this is by far the superior design for sure. I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree, would agree with me if you replace the very difficult head bulb on a GMT 800. 900 is the way to go. So much easier, so much smaller and compact, right? What a piece of shit. It just doesn't turn, dude. Is with this thing. God, ow. Yeah, so anybody else who might have to go through this, that's the bolt, it just goes right through the side. So once you get your arm in there, you just take it right out that way. And that's it, and then there's this, oh, there used to be, no, it's still there. This stupid thing, it's like the headlight slides down into that. This is what didn't want to release. It looked like a clip, but it wouldn't unclip. So I just ended up sliding it up and like forcing it out. It looks like the whole, like this whole clip that this is mounted in, is supposed to, it's supposed to come out as one assembly. I got something to happen. It looks like I, That's how that comes out, dude. This isn't even, what? So it does have a lock on it. Literally every single video I looked up didn't even look like this. What is going on? So this goes in here and then you lock it around it. What? Wow, that's crazy. Why was every, is this just a different bulb? Dude, literally, every, is this even, the new one's even gonna fit? Yeah, it looks correct. Why was every single other XLA different from this? Are these like aftermarket? What is going on? So yeah, that was never gonna come out. There's this little tab. When the bulb is in there, you have to boop, do that and it locks it in. And then you do that and unlocks it. So we install it. Boom, installed. It doesn't actually rotate out like Everybody on the internet was telling me. That's a perfect example of don't trust the internet. Can you even believe me? All right, so while we're here, 
I believe, now the instructions don't say so, they have like all of the other bulbs, like how to hook them up, but they do not say anything about the D1S. But I believe this is going to eliminate the ballast altogether. And I think this is just like a control box for it or maybe something to keep like the can system happy. But regardless, the only connections that we really have here are these two. And I believe what we're gonna do is just cut the power and ground going into the, uh, the ballast. And we're gonna connect these guys here. I'm assuming that's how that's gonna work. I don't know how this connector comes out. I'm not even sure if it does come out because it doesn't look like there's a, a tab on it. But what I'm gonna do is just snip this right here and just tuck these away just so this is still here in case I ever need it again. And then I'm gonna probably just solder these two or butt connect them directly to this, whichever one's power and ground. And then they should work that way. I have absolutely no use for the second set of LEDs. So if one of you guys want them, I'm gonna give them away. Leave a comment down below. Obviously you're gonna wanna have a GMT 900 to make the best use of them. But leave a comment if you have one, let me know uh, what truck you're working on. Whether it's a Tahoe, you know, a Yukon, whatever it may be, GMT 900 wise. And um, yeah, I'll take your comment. I'll throw in just a random generator and I'll pick a winner to give away my second set of LEDs. Now I have to see which is which because I believe LEDs are kind of, they're like polarity sensitive in that way. So I'm going to just snip these kind of twist them together and then throw them back on the truck, just plug them in to see if they light up the way they're supposed to. And then I'll make the permanent connections. But yeah, I wanna leave some slack here just in case this gotta go back. So I'll wrap those up. Let's strip those. I'll strip these. I'm just gonna very crudely twist them together for now to test this. I'm assuming black's gonna be ground, but you know what, assuming doesn't seem to get me anywhere anymore. All right, well, here goes nothing. Oh, <gasps> I see LED. Yes. Okay, simple enough. Got our little fan going. Ooh, those things are bright. Let's try to pop them in the... Pop them in the housing, see what they look like coming out of the projector. All right, they're, it's just loosely sitting in there, but... That'll do just fine. We'll have to test them at night, but that matches perfectly with the top one. That's exactly what I was looking for. And like I said, the fog lights are already white LEDs, so these should match perfectly. And we'll just go, we'll stash that in there, stash that in there, stash that in there. We'll also stash that in there. You know what? I think I'm also gonna stash this in there. And then we could put our, let's make sure that's tight, get our cover back on. Gonna seal everything up. Perfect. And here we are after making the discovery that um, there is no separate high and low beam bulb. The low beam is also the high beam. There's just something in the projector that like flicks the light up. You'll see when I hit it here. You can hear that click that just shoots the light up so high and low beam one bulb the d1s in that housing there that's apparently the daytime bulb i thought that was the high beam and that's just the marker light so right now what we're gonna do is pop the two daytime bulbs in because those sylvanias i picked up wherever the hell they ended up these guys are supposedly the correct daytime bulbs. So let's pop those in and see if they work. It looks like the housing, dude, this is gonna be annoying. I think the housing's actually missing something. Let's see if this even lights up. The problem also is we're inside, so it's like, it's too dark. It's the auto sensor is just turning the lights on. Maybe if I turn the headlights off. No, I'm not getting any daytime running light. I mean, the other housing has a has like a plastic ring on it. Like right on the housing there, on the other one, there's like a plastic retainer. This housing doesn't have it, so... I'm not sure if I could get that separately. I mean, I probably can. I don't know if it's just broken off of the headlight. 
But unfortunately, it looks like all I'm going to be able to get right now is the, the low beams and the marker lights working. I mean, that's something, but I got to look into why these aren't even turning on. I know too, I did a little research on the daytime lights. Apparently there's like a relay that's built into the fuse box. It's like soldered in there. That is apparently like a common failure point. And um, yeah, you kind of got to replace the whole fuse, fuse box if that fails, so. If that's the case, we are not going to be running daytime lighting lights anytime soon at least. I mean, if I can at least get power to them and I know, you know, they're going to work, then I could figure out the bolt. Nah, the fuse is fine. Uh, fun. But you know what? What did I... There was a bulb in there, was there not? I pulled out like an LED that was in there. That I thought was the high beam at first. Where the hell did I put it? This thing. Oh, it's all on here. So this is what was in there. Plug this because I could have swore that this thing had one light that was always on. And I remember looking, I don't know, maybe I was just driving like when the the headlights were just auto on, like it was just a little darker out, but I could have swore like even during the day, I was seeing a light that was the, um, that was just always on, only on the driver's side. And that would make sense because that side didn't have a bulb in it. So this had to be working. Maybe the bulbs I just got are freaking wrong. So that fits. Let's see if we get the daytime running lights to come on now. So they're not gonna come on with the headlights, but if I turn the headlights off, it should come on. I don't think that would kill the running lights too, would it? I'm gonna shine a flashlight on the sensor and we'll see if that makes it come on. So technically, it should kill the headlights and turn on the, um, the daytimes. There we go. And we have nothing still. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna go hit the high beams. We got high beam. We should still have turn signals. Those are down below. And then here are the fog lights that we already had in there. Like I said, the previous owner already had LEDs in there. So we're all nice and matching now. Everything's all white. I just gotta figure out why the hell the uh, the daytime lights don't work. But these actually work really good. I've been using these for a few days now, driving back and forth to work at night. And uh, they're actually really bright. I think they are still a little brighter than the Xenons too. I was a little worried that the LEDs may not have been as bright because I've used different LEDs over the years. And I noticed when I had my Subaru, I put some LED bulbs in that car that had projectors and they weren't as bright as the original lights that were in there. But these look incredible, they're the perfect color. And you can see with the projector, they make a nice clean line. Let me go and hit the high beam. That works as it's supposed to. So yeah, only one bulb for the, uh, the high and low beam. Well, we got to update our list here. We kind of fixed something. So we have, uh, where are we? Headlights, daytime lights. Well, we can remove headlights. Those are working now. Both of them are working now. Daytime lights are still screwed. All right, so I know it may seem like I absolutely hate this Escalade. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of do hate it. I, I hate, I don't know. It annoys me, I think, more than anything. It's just because there's a lot of things on this that need to be fixed that I didn't have to worry about on the Tahoe. And it's just because it's a newer vehicle, has extra little bells and whistles. But also in my mind, like I knew buying this, I knew the GMT 900 is where it all starts going downhill for these. Like, not that they're still not reliable, like they still go for hundreds of thousands of miles. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have them that have done that. Um, it's just, you know, like the stupid issues with the AFM, the stupid issues with the, these, the six L80s and the torque converters. Um, all this little stupid things like with the daytime lights not working. I don't know. It, it seems like these are all common issues with these and I didn't have to worry about with this with the Tahoe. So that's why it's kind of, it's just, it's annoying having to kind of fix all this little stuff, which you don't really have to worry about on the older trucks. Anyway, with that being said, I am planning on sort of changing directions with this. I've decided... I am still gonna keep it around, but I think I'm gonna start modifying it just a little bit to turn it into something that I like more. There'll be more details on that 
in the future when we actually start doing stuff to it. But right now we're just gonna continue chugging along, kind of taking care of the repair stuff. Now I do wanna thank LostFit for sending me those bulbs. I am very happy with them. The LEDs, they seem to be just as bright, if not brighter than the Xenons that were in there. Now we don't have those ballasts in there. We don't have to worry about them freaking failing. One less thing to go wrong. And I do like how everything's kind of matching white now with the, uh, the marker light, the headlight, and the fog light. I still got to figure out the daytime running thing. So let me know what you guys think as far as that goes. Do I just swap the fuse box out? Is there something else that could be going on with that? Uh, but the fuse is good. And I do have both the new bulbs in there. It made no difference at all. I was planning on cleaning up the headlight housings. We'll probably take care of that in the detail video. They're not terrible. Like, they sound like they're hazed over, completely yellow and chalky. It's just the passenger side has a little, some bug stains on it. And the fog lights are definitely a little bit hazy compared to the headlights. But uh, yeah, the lights came out great. I'm really happy with them. And if you want to go pick up a set yourself, we do have a coupon code for you guys. So uh, off your entire order from Laws Fit, I'm going to put a link down in the description. Use the code LSXMAT right there on the screen. You get 20% off your order. Pick up lights for whatever the hell you may need. You got one of these, you want to do an LED conversion, get rid of the stupid ballasts. Uh, go ahead and do that. You'll get 20% off your whole order. But for now, that's going to do it. Uh, next video on this, of course, we're going to be continuing on the list. Just kind of taking things off. And uh, yeah, eventually it's going to turn into something that I want to keep around. I promise. I hope. I promise it will. It will. I will learn to like it. Maybe one day I'll even love it. Who knows? Time will tell.